Welcome back. Tonight we're continuing our work on our 2x72, we'll call it industrial belt grinder build. We're going to be doing quite a bit on the mini mill because the plate's a little thick. I want to get a little more clearance for the uh, drive the drive pulley on the belt grinder. So we're going to keep going. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it. So we're going to see if these hold downs work. This is kind of an odd angle, but we're not taking a lot off in one stretch. We're honestly only taking five to ten thousandths off at a time. Which that's fine, I'd rather go slow, take my time, I don't want to burn this machine up. But uh, I'm hoping, if I get those tight enough, I'm kind of hoping it'll hold it just fine. Do a couple test runs, this mill has been great, honestly it's, it's been really good. I'm kind of regretting put, putting it on wheels, it doesn't really affect me when I'm running it, but kind of nice to have it a little more solid but it's been it's been really good there's no no complaints here at all Well, moving along, we're ready to weld this piece up here. So, the tooling arms, I have uh, four thousandths brass chim stock in between each layer of these. So I can clamp these up tight. I'll have to drive them out, but once I drive the tool arms out after this is welded up, the brass shim stock will fall out. We won't have that to worry about. We're also going to have to machine a groove in these tool arms to receive the locking mechanism to, to hold them in place as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack all the corners in a couple spots along the way just to keep things from warping. And then we'll slowly, we'll, by jumping around, we'll keep filling in with weld. Because that was a problem I ran into on the last build was I didn't know as much about welding at the time. So I welded too much in one spot, warped things a little bit. Like I said, it's, it's worked fine. But like the, the tool rest and everything has a little bit of a dish in it from the welding process. So we're going to take our time and be real careful with this one. So that was the easy part of the build, doing that main plate and all that. That's the easiest part we have on this. The rest of what we have is going to be a lot of small parts. It's going to be a lot of alignment. We've got a lot of welding. Now the base should be pretty easy. Even the base on this is going to be very heavy compared to most of what you see. It's one inch thick steel. 
Well, probably a little over six inches wide. We'll make it however long we need for this piece. And then I'm still debating on whether I'm going to put legs or bench mount it, but I'm probably going to put legs on it. I'll probably do a more of a tripod. We'll see what develops. We've got to get a slot cut in this so that we can pivot this to do the uh, the horizontal so we can tilt the head horizontally. So I might get creative, just make a jig that can go in the drill press, drill all the holes out, and then we'll make a jig for the, uh, the mini mill so that we can clean it out nicely. Not sure how it's going to go. I've seen it on the old lube tubes a few times, so I figure why not? We'll give it a shot. But uh, the circle cutting jig and that little welfare rig that I put together there does a pretty nice job I ground that clean obviously I figure you've seen enough grinding on the channel I don't need to sit here and grind for three days because everybody kind of gets the point So the plywood was a bad idea. I've seen a lot of videos where people have done that, but trying to do this by hand, the bolt there starts loosening up, starts wobbling all over. Broke one bit doing it. Um, but we got it. So that's going to be our pivot point for the whole machine. We have our front pivot point finished, welded on, the grooves cut in it. Now, like a moron, I meant to mill a couple of slots in the edge of this for a locking lever. I said I really like the KMG design. It seems to be a very high quality grinder and I really like the simplicity and the use and the ease of tilting the head on it. That's probably the best design I've seen so far. But I'll just do it with the grinder and we'll get to that later on here in a little bit. But I have to make the rear pivot point. The important thing I need to do here is make sure that my centers on this bolt, we're using a half inch grade eight bolt for the pivot points with the uh, nylon lock nut on it so that we can have it snug but not so tight that we can't turn this easily. Uh, we'll have a washer spaced in between the actual pedestal of this and these pivot points, give a little bit of clearance there. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants like I do on every project I build. I've seen a couple ideas I like. I know what I don't like after building the first one. It's like every other project I ever do here. There's nothing drawn out. There's no measurements taken. Like I said, I'm pretty much flying by the seat of my pants and we'll see what develops. So we're going to get on the rear pivot point. Mike Hegdahl knows all about that rear pivot point, don't you buddy? Long time viewers, you're, you're allowed to screw with them a little bit. Make sure they, you know, it's how you know they're still watching when he asked in the comments, well, what do you mean by that?
Boy, this thing's going to be heavy. But, we're trying to make this thing just as bulletproof as possible. Well, we're at a pretty good point to stop for one night in this video. The chassis is pretty well, it's roughed out. So now it's going to be time for all the bells and the whistles. Now we're going to be doing a locking lever on the front of this and also a locking knob that will thread into the, the 5 h plate behind here. We're going to notch it out right here and then another notch right here so that when we tilt it horizontal, that lever will have a spring on it so that it locks it in place would be kind of nice, kind of a quick, easy. And that is not my design by any stretch. That uh, is actually the, KM, the KMG grinder design, but I really, really like it. So where we're at right now, we have one inch plate steel for the base. We have, I want to say it's inch and a quarter by two square stock for the, uh, for the tooling arms, tool arrest, all that. We have 3 h plate steel that we're running for the pivot points. We have grade 8 half inch bolts that we were, use, that we were using for the pivot pins. We have 5 h plate steel is making all this and the dividers. So we are just making really good progress on this this weekend. Now a lot of grinding, a lot of welding. I tell you what, a lot of you have told me for years to give that stick welder up and get myself a MIG. I finally did that last year. I got a uh, Hazard Fraught, one of the Titanium 200s, and I have totally fallen in love with that welder. It's an inverter welder. It's very smooth. It was about $1,000, but I've thrown a lot of welding at it. It's held up well. The plasma cutter, it's just one of the cheap Yes welders, the uh, Cut 55 DS Pro. I'm really happy with the way it works. It's a huge learning curve for me. I have to learn how to cut square with it and all that good stuff. But I tell you, I would have been here for days trying to get these circles cut. And yeah, I have to clean them up afterwards, but it really would have taken me days. The other thing that's helped this project a lot and has made a big difference in my shop is that mini mill that we got. Now I think it was last winter, maybe even the winter before. Uh, huge game changer. Being able to cut stuff like this and make it look halfway decent is so nice. Now, I'm not a machinist by any stretch. I'm just doing simple processes like this. But for me, it just makes all the difference. So that's what we're doing. As we tool up better, as we build things a little better, we could start doing a little more, some fancier stuff, some fancier tools that we can make. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's... Uh, I know to a lot of you, this is just another grinder build, and that's fine, because really that's what it is. But for me, this is this is where I make my spare money, is making these tools in here and getting them out the door. Any tooling I can have that works better than what I've had before just saves me time, a lot easier to use. I mean, this the horizontal tilt, that's going to be very nice for a lot of what I do. Uh, there's I can't tell you how many times I wished I was just able to tilt my grinder and once I saw a few people making them like that it's like man I need to have one of those but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this one 
I'll catch you on the next one.